Welcome back to the program. As promised, I'm joined now live out of Canberra by the Communications Minister, Mitch Fifield. Thanks very much for your company. Good to see you, Peter. Can I start with the ABC? Uh, you've made comments in the past about how you'd like to see stronger regional television for the ABC, not just regional radio news services, which we know uh, they really do have a monopoly over. Uh, what are you thinking in that respect? How can the ABC recalibrate, in your view, to be able to do more for regional television in particular? Oh, look, my, my point has uh, been that uh, the ABC is uh, there to service uh, all Australians, uh, including uh, the regions. Uh, there was uh, a bit of an issue uh, at the end of last year uh, when the ABC uh, sought to amend its uh, regional uh, radio uh, formatting, uh, which caused some concern in the community. Uh, and that just really highlighted to me uh, what a valuable and important role that the ABC plays in the regions. Uh, it's, uh, it's an issue that uh, my parliamentary colleagues are uh, very, uh, very keen about and uh, you would have seen that uh, Bridget McKenzie, uh, who mm. uh, is a Senate colleague from Victoria, has put forward a, a private senator's bill uh, to uh, make some suggestions as to how the ABC might be uh, more regionally focused. Now that doesn't represent government policy, uh, but I'm very happy for my parliamentary colleagues to uh, uh, float ideas uh, as to how the ABC can uh, uh, better meet its charter. At the risk of moving away from a very important subject to, to one that's a bit more light-hearted, having asked the first question down the barrel of the camera, I now have noticed the beard that you're sporting. Is that a, is, is that a change of pace for 2016 or is that going to come off when the Parliament returns? Oh, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a new and subtle form of disruption, Peter. Uh, but, uh, look, I just thought it was important to show uh, Chris Bowen uh, and Ed Husick uh, what a real beard looks like. <laughs> right, fair enough. Let's get back to media ownership laws. Uh, uh, you have already made some comments this year uh, about changes. We're really more talking about the two out of three rule, but uh, surely mixed into any sort of package, uh, you will also have to look at cross media ownership laws as well. Well, uh, we have, as you know, uh, essentially five uh, laws uh, which, uh, or rules uh, which uh, govern the media landscape uh, that were drafted uh, in a pre-digital world uh, for a pre-digital world. And uh, uh, two of uh, the significant ones are the 75% the reach rule, uh, which is often focused on, uh, which prevents uh, a TV uh, from uh, having more than 75% audience reach through the nation. And obviously that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense now that uh, we've got live streaming with 100% reach. Uh, but uh, in terms of, uh, I guess, what you might call cross-media ownership, there's the uh, two out of three rule, uh, which hmm. uh, prevents uh, someone from uh, owning uh, more than two out of the three uh, regulated platforms of uh, print, radio and TV uh, in a particular area. Uh, now, uh, I think that, Is that gonna also change? Uh, should be looked at. Well, it's, it's one of the ones that I'm, I'm seriously looking at, uh, along with the, with the reach rule, uh, because... Hmm. Uh, uh, Australians uh, have a lot of options, they have a lot of choices. Technology is changing uh, the way that they access their media. Uh, it's uh, giving them more choices and so uh, both the reach rule uh, and the two out of three rule uh, are gradually being rendered redundant. And look, uh, they were well intentioned when they were first put into place. It was to ensure that there was uh, diversity uh, of, uh, of media, uh, but we have diversity of media uh, by virtue of technology. That's not something uh, that we need to be uh, so concerned about today. And what about the likelihood of being able to actually get the changes through? Because it's one thing to hear you as the Minister talking about them becoming redundant and taking the view that they have to be looked at, and I couldn't agree more, quite frankly. But it's a whole other thing, obviously, as a Senator, putting your cap on as having uh, been the Manager of Government Business uh, in the Upper House for a while now, uh, dealing with the crossbenchers, dealing with the Labor Party. We've heard soundings from your opposite, Jason Clare, that he's open to these discussions, particularly the 75% reach one, but the two out of three uh, around cross-media ownership laws does seem a little bit more contentious, potentially. How do you think it's going to go, even if the government settles on the policy, when you then have to take it to the Senate? Look, uh, as the manager of government business in the Senate, um, I am by nature a, a Senate optimist who sees that the Senate is a, is a wonderful place of opportunity. Um, uh, Jason Clare is, uh, is, a, is a good and sensible uh, and responsible person. Um, he, uh, he takes a, a very uh, deep and sincere interest in public policy and uh, uh, he's indicated publicly uh, that they're uh, open to uh, removing the reach rule. Uh, the two out of three rule, um, uh, the opposition have said, uh, look, put forward a proposition uh, and, uh, and we'll take a look. Um, uh, so uh, 
I, I'm optimistic. Uh, I've had good discussions with the, with the crossbench uh, as well as uh, my uh, coalition uh, party room colleagues. Uh, what it really comes down to, I think, where the rubber really hits the road is uh, uh, the issue of uh, protection for local content. Uh, and what most people mean when they say that uh, is uh, protection for local news service. Uh, we, as a, as a government, um, we're pretty much um, uh, ownership agnostic. Uh, Warren Truss earlier today, I think, uh, made that point in, in a doorstop. Um, we're not really fussed um, who owns media. We think it's for uh, business to configure themselves in the way that they think uh, suits their model best uh, and that can give them viability. Um, that's one of the reasons why we want to change mm. uh, the, uh, the, the media laws, is to enable uh, business uh, to do that. Uh, because if you've got a viable business, uh, then they're going to be in a much better position to uh, provide local content. But um, I understand uh, that there's uh, uh, a desire uh, amongst colleagues and in the community that in any changed landscape where there may be uh, mergers or reconfigurations uh, that the local content that is currently there uh, is protected. Now uh, we do have local content requirements um, attached to uh, TV licences in certain markets uh, but there are uh, many uh, regional TV providers who actually uh, present uh, local news uh, and local content in excess of their licence requirements. Um, so we would want to see in any legislative package uh, mechanisms to ensure that uh, that local content was protected and as regional TV providers uh, tell me uh, that uh, getting scale will put them in a better position to uh, present local content uh, then I don't imagine uh, that they will have uh, much difficulty uh, with, uh, with a sensible approach in legislation to local content. Moving to internal party matters, as a Victorian, uh, are you just looking at what's going on in New South Wales and shaking your head and thinking, fellas, get it together? Oh, look, uh, I was a member of the New South Wales division of the party uh, for about uh, eight years uh, before I, I moved to uh, Victoria 25 plus years ago, uh, and I'm very happy uh, in, in the Victoria division of the party. Uh, <laughs> look, I mean, one of... One of, the, one of the good things about our party, I think in contrast with, with Labor, is that we do have um, open, transparent and democratic processes uh, where it's the individual branch members who, who make the decisions and they really do make their own decisions. Uh, they're but that not doesn't really happen though uh, in New South Wales. I've got to pull you up on that, Senator, because whilst I know that there's been a shift in that direction, uh, I'm writing about this for a feature in The Australian tomorrow, there's been that shift right around divisions around Australia, here in Western Australia where I am, where you are in Victoria, not really in New South Wales. That's why the Prime Minister was effectively laughed at uh, late last year when he said there are no factions in the Liberal Party to a New South Wales division audience. They uh, broke into laughter because the structures support factionalism there in a way that perhaps they don't as much uh, in states like your own. Oh, look, there, there are uh, there are people who have particular uh, tendencies. Uh, there are people who, uh, you know, will will gather around strong personalities from time to time. But uh, you know, that that's just human nature, uh, and happens in in any organisation. But we don't have. Uh, in the Liberal Party, uh, dictation uh, to uh, individual branch members uh, by trade union blocs uh, who, who can uh, and do direct people how to That's vote. True. Um, the, the, the Liberal Party just really doesn't operate like that. All right, Mitch Fifield, we appreciate your time as always here on Newsday. Thanks very much uh, for finding time for us in this January period before it's all going to be back on. Busy parliamentary structure coming up in the first half of the year. A absolutely, but uh, as I say, uh, the Senate is a wonderful place of opportunity, and uh, people should—they shouldn't—they should resist the temptation to only tune into the Green Chamber. Look at the red one for a change. <laughs> well, we'll keep an eye on it when we uh, when we assess question time this year with David Spears. Thanks for your company. Thanks, Peter.